do you have a AV amplifier that has suddenly stopped outputting audio to the speakers? This video might help you diagnose and fix that receiver. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we're doing a two-part video. We are going to try to fix this audio video receiver. It is an Onkyo, which is a brand that I really like. However, there is a large number of starting to age receivers. This one, because it has HDMI version 1.3a, it's getting kind of old. I mean, it's if I have to admit it, it's probably more than 10 years old now. However, it is still a great receiver and I've done other videos that show my gaming setup and my home theater, which this was the main receiver in that setup. However, we moved recently and when we moved, I started to set up the home theater again and found that I was not getting any audio output to any of my speakers. See, it turns on and I do hear a click but now if I go to tuner, so we're on 90.3, that is a station here, but at very least I should get fuzz and I'm not getting anything at all. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. For us to fix it, we will need to use a special tool. Now I have seen guys use like even a light bulb to do this repair, but this tool, which is the right tool for the job, is only a little bit more money than buying that light bulb, which most people don't have lying around anyway. So let's do a quick unboxing of what this is. I'll tell you all about it, and then we'll start tearing this down to explore where I believe the problem is. This in here, we've got some Chinese writing. Oh, and some English writing that says description. Wind gun shows iron display the work thermometer. Okay, awesome. And then we've got this little guy here, which is heat shrink into here. Now this is a reflow station. It comes with a power cord, comes with some new solder, scratch pad, three separate tips for our heat gun. It also, this is not just a reflow workstation, it's also a soldering gun. It comes with tips as well for different solder jobs that you might have. And this is solder wick. It's just a small container of it, but it's enough to get yourself into trouble. And if you didn't already have any, it's got some tweezers. These ones are really good because they are pointy and can fit into small areas. And then these ones are more of like your top down tweezer. And that is all that's in the box. And the nice thing about this power cord is it's a legit power cord. So this is a 120 volt with a grounding wire, which is great. It's not very long. It's only about three feet long. It's like Christmas. There's our solder station. Now the nice thing is the cord on this is kind of small, but I like these connectors and they are made so that you can't screw this up. They'll only plug into one port. You can see that the ports are different. So it would be impossible for me to plug this cord into here. It, it won't go. So it goes into here nicely like that. It's also got the configuration. It's got this little tab on the top here so that it can only go in one way like that. And then we can lock that down like that. Make sure we get a good strong connection. And this is supposed to sit on here just like this. Now it does have the power port on the side with an on off switch and it's got the soldering iron. Now I do not need the soldering iron today. Okay. And then that would go in here just like this. Now the thing to note is this has a plastic tip melted onto the end. So you would want to remove that before you turn this on. Now we might as well plug this in and see how it turns on and everything before we start tearing into the stereo. So that's on. This automatically is set to 200. I do not want to use this. So I'm going to pull this out now. So when I take it out, it says OP for open circuit. Now let's try turning this on, see how high this goes. So hopefully it goes to 300, it does. Fun fact, most reflow work that you're gonna do, you wanna do at about 300 degrees Celsius. That's because the solder 
melts just under 300 degrees. That gives you a little bit of headroom, so you definitely know that it's melting and reflowing. You also can press this button and then it says F10. That's a fan setting of one through 10. Most work that you're gonna do, you want the fan to blow at about 50%. So in this case, it would be F5. The reason you don't wanna to go too high with your fan speed is if you get too much fan speed, imagine this is your surface mount IC or resistor or whatever, and you're kind of blowing it around. If you get at an angle, you could blow it right over. Now this doesn't have that high of a fan output, but it is high enough that it could absolutely blow your components around, which you don't want to do. If it ends up being too much, you just press the fan button and then turn it down to like fan two. Now the repair that we're going to be doing today, fan 50 will be just fine. Now I'm going to turn this off because I still need to open up the stereo system. The first thing we need to do is pop the top off of this. Usually there's just going to be a few screws in the side like this one has. I did unplug this already. You will want to do the work with it unplugged. You don't want to have anything plugged in in case you do short something out. In this case, the part we're looking for is right here. This guy right here. This is the Texas Instruments DSP chip. These can get broken. They can get cold solder joints that come apart because they crack over time. They heat and they cool and they heat and they cool. So it'll create stress cracks. Now, I told you that mine stopped working when I moved. I think what happened was somebody probably dropped this and just stress cracked something on here. And usually it's this DSP. It is known to be fragile. And it's not just the Onkyo amplifiers that would suffer from something like this because this chip is made by Texas Instruments. So it can exist in a lot of different home theater systems, not just Onkyo. Even though the Onkyo ones, they are starting to get a reputation for breaking around this time because of these DSP chips. Luckily, I'm left-handed. This is not gonna be 300 degrees right away, but when you are heating up a component like this, you want to heat it up far away and then gradually move closer. Once we get closer to where we're right on top of it, we only want to stay right on top of it for about 30 seconds. Just go like this in a circling motion over top of the chip. If you were doing this the correct way, you would actually have a temperature probe on here so that you know how hot you're getting the board. But I don't have that and you might not either. This uh, reflow station you can get on Amazon for like 50 bucks. Uh, that would be US. I think Canadian I paid 60 five or so. All I'm doing is just blowing it around just to try and get kind of the whole area warm initially. Once I get the area warm, which you want to do for about a minute, is go a lot closer and go a little bit slower just to make sure that we're getting everything warm. You want to make sure you're not going to bump your table while you're working on this. Now I'm going to move a lot closer and I'm going to move a lot slower. And all I want to do is get right to where those solder joints are and I want them to get warm enough to reflow the solder. This is why we have it at 300 degrees so that we can actually heat something up here. If we don't get it hot enough then that won't fix the problem anyway. Now these boards are usually baked. It can handle the heat. Don't be worried about the heat and this is why some people say to fix electronics you can just throw it in the oven at 300 degrees for 10 minutes and that might work too. That's not what we're gonna do in this video because I didn't want to take all the plastic connectors off. One other thing that I just noticed, this is blowing 300 degree temperature out of here. Now, if I lie this down on here, it goes into cool mode and it actually stops heating. So right now it's just blowing air through to cool the tip and then it shuts off. How cool is that? So when I pick it back up, It'll now start blowing at the 300 degrees at the fan speed that I set. Wow. So we want the chip now to cool down to room temperature before we start putting power back through it and then see if we're getting any output through the speakers now. Before I put this back together, I can plug it in. Should be cool enough. Turn it on. One thing that is happening now I don't know if you can hear it, but I'll hold my microphone up here. There's no antenna, so it's fuzzy. So since there's no antenna, 
it's just trying to play fuzz. Let's see if I stick this chunk of wire in here. It might be really loud. Yes. Okay, I don't want to get demonetized. All I can tell you is that I now do have sound. So that's about as far as we can go with this repair. We've got the cover back on. We've proved that music now plays through from the tuner. I would have to go hook it up to the home theater system now to see if everything's functioning, but that chip runs everything. So I have every reason to believe that this would be fully functioning now because the sound wasn't working before. With respects to this soldering rework station, I have to say from the reflow perspective, this is about as cheap as you can go and it's surprisingly good. Obviously you saw that we fixed this. The $50 spent on this was well worth it because this is now a couple hundred dollar valued stereo system. So I can keep this, put it back in my home theater, which I want to do because the amp that I bought to replace this one sucks compared to how good this one is. Now there are other things you can do with this station as we talked about different size tips. You've got an actual electronics ready soldering gun, which this is pretty good as far as like the tip size is nice and small. You can get very accurate soldering done with this. You compare that to this guy, which is a, I mean, this is not bad. It's a Weller SP23L soldering gun. It's nice because it lights up when you have it plugged in, but you can see the tip on this versus the tip on this. It's like night and day difference for fine soldering jobs. Plus this one is, I forget how many watts. Does it even, does it say? But it's definitely more than this guy. This is just a little 15 water. It's enough to get you in trouble, but not enough to do more of like the more common solder repair jobs. So I've had this one for, well, probably 20 years now. I've used it for like when I modded my Wii way back in like 2005, I used this to solder my mod chip onto that Wii, which was difficult because it is not a very fine point for your soldering jobs. This one's gonna go in the garbage and this will be my new go-to soldering gun. So I'm really excited about this station. For the price, I mean, you can't beat the price of this soldering station. For the value, I think the value is there. Now this is not a professional station. It's not something you can go start your own electronics repair shop with, but it is definitely good enough to obviously fix a stereo, which we just did and probably fix a lot of other things around your house or get yourself into just enough trouble to start having some interesting things happen. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.